In 2020, Samsung upended their entire QLED line from 2019 by introducing 8K TVs like the Q800T we have here. Is it ahead of the curve or is 8K distant to have the same future as curved TVs? Well, this is the review. Stick around. Hey guys, it's the Villa Man here, home theater enthusiast and lover of all things tech. Now, if you're new here, then on this channel, we review, demo, and compare the audio and video tech that entertains you. Like TVs like these. So if you're into that and you didn't instantly hit that subscribe button, then feel free to do so. Go ahead. All right, so Samsung chose an interesting direction to take their 2020 QLED TVs. Last year had some great 4K sets like the Q90R and the Q80R that I reviewed. And even though they certainly weren't perfect, they both had some great features that made them very compelling buys. In 2020 though, the updated versions of these TVs didn't have quite as good a feature set as the ones they replaced. I'm specifically talking about the number of full array local dimming zones and the forward look in HDMI 2.1 implementation. You want to talk specs? Let's talk specs for a little bit. The Q800T comes in a 65, 75, and 82 inch screen size. It has a native 7680 by 4328K panel with 120 hertz refresh rate and 220 local dimming zones. It has four HDMI ports with three of them being HDMI 2.0 and one full bandwidth HDMI 2.1 port denoted by a game controller icon beside it. So now that we know about these key specs, let's talk about what those actually mean. First, let's talk about those HDMI ports. 8K HDR or just 4K HDR content at 120 Hz requires HDMI 2.1 bandwidth. And one would think that an 8K TV with a 120 Hz panel would have more than one of them. That particular omission really perplexed me because it means that if you're interested in the next gen consoles, then you can only have one of them connected to the HDMI 2.1 port at a time. One might argue that you can always use one of the other three HDMI 2.0 ports, but then doesn't that defeat the point of having an 8K or a 120 Hertz TV? Even the HDMI port with the EARC support is only an HDMI 2.0 version, so it's not like you'll be able to connect an HDMI 2.1 receiver to that to expand the number of HDMI 2.1 devices you can connect. Looking back on the Q80R from 2019 that had about 90 full array local dimming zones and the Q90R that had about 490. Now, I mentioned that for a bit of context. You see, the Q800T is pretty much priced like the Q90R was last last year, but at the same time, it isn't a flagship like the Q90R was. It sits below the other 2020 8K QLED, the Q900T, so the Q800T has 220 local dimming zones, which is more than the 2019 4K counterpart, the Q80R, but then it's not as much as the 490 zones found in the Q90R. For any full array local dimming TV, the backlight is a very important component since it plays a huge role in the overall contrast performance and the picture quality. So in essence, with the Q800T, you're trading dynamic contrast performance for resolution, the vast majority of which will be upscaled since there aren't any 8K sources besides YouTube videos right now. Sure, that may change in the future, but even if the 8K source is a connected device, then you'll only be able to connect one at a time. So considering all that, I really wonder what Samsung's objective is with their 8K TVs. Is it to provide some kind of tangible benefit over 4K, which I personally don't see, or is it just to push the evolution of TV technology, regardless of whether there's a use case right now? I don't know. Tell me what you think in the comments. But don't get me wrong, it's not like I'm panning this TV or I only have negative things to say about it. No, there's definitely some things that I do like about it, but I think the issues that I mentioned are important points that need to be at least acknowledged. No matter how new and exciting the technology is, it's almost like how I felt with the TCL Mini LED TV all over again. 
So now that I've mentioned all that, let's talk about some of the things that I actually like about the TV and what it does well. The TV has an intelligent mode and an 8K AI upscaling, which does a really good job of upscaling lower quality content. In my comparison with the LG C10 OLED, I mentioned how well both TVs upscale content. The intelligent mode adjusts the picture and audio based on your room and the content you're watching. The TV seems to generally boost the mids and low frequency sounds to give it more of a presence and it does seem to have a bias of enabling motion enhancement, which you may know that I'm not a fan of. Speaking of which, they'll be releasing a firmware update with the new Filmmaker mode, but I couldn't test that at the time of this review, unfortunately. The Filmmaker mode is a more natural picture mode which disables all kinds of image enhancement. Motion handling was also great. The TV has no motion problems at all like judder or ghosting and could handle 24 frames per second pull down very well for movies and if you're into sports just know that the motion smoothing is some of the best I've ever seen. It smooths out the image with less artifacting than I've seen on any other TV including the LG OLED that I've compared it to. The most important part though is the picture and the picture looks very good. HDR content is vivid with contrast that is punchy and has that great HDR pop that you're looking for. It really is great how good the picture looks even when watching lower quality content, but it really made me wonder just how much better it would have been with more local dimming zones akin to what was available in the Q90R last year. Since having more local dimming zones would lead to having a more refined backlight control because as good as the contrast performance is, there's still too much blooming in scenes with bright objects on a dark background. At least that's what I think for such a high-end set. The viewing angles are great and almost OLED-like with minimal contrast and color shifts while viewing off-axis and the anti-reflective coating makes the screen one of the best I've tested and pretty much one of the best you can get but that's a feature of most of the higher-end Samsung QLEDs. The screen did have some vignetting in the corners. I think that's because of how aggressive the backlight is managed and sometimes it would crush details in the scenes with low stimulus like the beginning and end of the star field test that I did in the screen test video. Samsung's Tizen OS is also as fluid and responsive as any smart TV platform out there and has all the streaming apps you've come to love and more. Truly a streamer's paradise. The TV without a doubt has some great gaming features even though it only has one HDMI 2.1 port. It has FreeSync which will help you to have a tear-free and stutter-free high frame rate gaming experience on the Xbox One X or the next gen consoles, the PS5 and Xbox Series X. It also has motion enhancement for gaming which some of you may like but I think it just leads to a natural looking motion and artifacting. It's almost the total opposite of the motion enhancement in movie mode which is some of the best I've seen on any other TV and has minimal artifacting. So to wrap this up, who is this TV for? Well, if you want a 2020 QLED TV with the best contrast performance of its peers and great gaming performance for now and the future, then this might be the one to consider. That said, I don't think there'd be much of a benefit to an 8K TV that's only 65 inches. Again, it's not that I think the TV is bad because it has a great picture, but I just think it would have been a better 4K TV. Let me know your thoughts in the comments about this TV and 8K k tvs in general don't forget to like the video if you liked it and check out the other coverage of the q800t including the lg oled picture and gaming comparison and if you haven't subscribed yet then make sure to subscribe 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 and check out the merch store for awesome t-shirts like this and more thanks for watching and until next time this has been your friendly neighborhood villa man saying be safe peace